So Pantheon is a new Ethereum client built with the JVM. Uh, because we built it from the ground up, it's Apache 2 license, and we quietly over open sourced it over the weekend. It's now fully open source. You can check it out. We'll be sharing the repo later. Uh, we had a few uh, crawlers find us over the weekend and commit PRs, uh, submit PRs and get them committed, so we're up and running. And it all works. Uh, it runs live on mainnet, on Rinkeby, on Robston. There's proof of work. There's click POA. It's a, it's a real functioning client. You know, we integrate with a bunch of other consensus projects, with Infura, with Alethio, with Truffle, MetaMask, and a bunch of non-consensus uh, players in the ecosystem as well, and we're, we're always looking for more. So you know, the, uh, the final point that I just want to say on what we are and where we are is this is our first release. We wanted to release early so we could get feedback and help the community shape what we're doing. So please play around with it. Please realize it's a work in progress, but please work with us to make it better. And so just to prove that we're real, this is a snapshot we took this morning from ETHSTATS. And lo and behold, there we are running both our own nodes and running on Infura Pantheon nodes, which for us is pretty exciting. It works. It's real. Uh, we're not making this up. So, so why did we do this? Uh, why did we spend the last year building another Ethereum client? A couple reasons. First, we believe that uh, a healthy ecosystem requires a number of clients. We want a diversity of approaches. We want a diversity of techniques and teams all contributing ideas. And so we thought another client could really contribute. The second bit, though, is we really wanted to build our capabilities from the ground up and get into the weeds of the challenges of building a client. That's really important for us because it provides a foundation for a lot of the research efforts we're contributing to as well on Ethereum 2.0 work as well as some of our enterprise research. And you know, the other bit that's really important to us is we want to help grow the community. You know, Ethereum wins and Ethereum works and Ethereum thrives because of the community we have. And so by enabling uh, another language, another team, another set of developers to work with the community. We're hoping to grow and, and help this community thrive. But the final bit is we also wanted to bring enterprises to mainnet and you know, help facilitate enterprises working on mainnet. And so we built it from the ground up to be Apache 2 license out of the box. Any enterprise can take this and play with it. And so dr drilling a little deeper into this, we chose Java for Pantheon for three main reasons. The first is that Java is a really mature ecosystem, and it comes with a lot of free tooling. Uh, database integrations, other sorts of integrations, instrumentation, monitoring, logging, stuff that you just get for free out of the box with Java, which is really exciting. But it's the second and third reason that excite us the most. Java has an enormous community of developers that aren't engaging sufficiently in Ethereum right now. And they're usually enterprise developers, and so we're hoping by delivering enterprise-grade software, we can help port them over here. And the final bit is enterprises have invested in Java. They have Java systems. They have Java talent. And it's just easier for them to play around on Java. And so I'm going to hand over to Shahan, who'll talk more about our enterprise vision as well. Hi, everybody. So one of the reasons why we <laughs> So why is Pegasus building Pantheon? Well, when we started getting involved in this space, we were, we were involved in the EEA, f founding of the EEA. We were getting involved with enterprises, forming the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance vision. And we were hearing from enterprises that they wanted to use Ethereum. Well, no, no kidding. It's a great platform. It's robust. It's resilient. And we, we wanted to hear their requirements. So we were trying to ingest their requirements into the EEA vision. And then from there, we started working with customers. We engaged with the government of Dubai. We were hearing from the government that they wanted to use enterprise-grade Ethereum, and they also wanted to use Mainnet. Well, no, no kidding. And so <laughs> we, we wanted to bridge these two disparate worlds. We wanted to br build enterprise-grade Mainnet technologies with, that would integrate and interoperate with enterprise technology stacks. And that's why Pegasus was founded, in order to build Pantheon from the ground up in a way that enterprises would be able to incorporate into their technology stacks. So where is Pegasus? Well, Pegasus is a global group. We're a group of 50 people in Australia, Europe, and North America. We have three main, pro three main prongs. We have product, which is building Pantheon, which is focused on mainnet. Mainnet is our number one priority. And at the same time, we are building enterprise modules for Ethereum, enterprise-grade Ethereum. 
And at the same time, we're doing research and development with the Ethereum Foundation. We're focused on Ethereum 2.0. We're focused on enter Enterprise Ethereum. We're, uh, we're working on enterprise modules like interoperability, scalability, working with existing technology stacks. And at the same time, we have a standards group that is helping to br bring mainnet standards into the enterprise group, en enterprise space, so that enterprises can have uh, trust that they can use mainnet technologies in their technology stack. And now I will hand it over to Rob, who will talk demo Pantheon and talk about the roadmap. So. While it was kind of cool showing like a screenshot of ETH stats, it's actually kind of nice to see software as well. So I'll start off by showing we've created a uh, quick start that we ship as a part of Pantheon. And I'll start by just running that up. And I won't stop it first. It's already stopped. So we'll start with the running the private, private network. So this is just a series of Docker, Docker images uh, running a few nodes and a a uh, nice little block explorer that's been built by Alethio. So as this is started, I'm going to quickly go across and go to our acceptance test. So we take, I guess, our software really seriously. We've got a great set of acceptance tests that we are regularly running on commit, and then some extra acceptance tests that we have sort of running as, as well. So we've got uh, Truffle is one of the tools that we think is uh, pretty important for us to be able to support. And so it's what we're running. And so I'm going to use that, and we're going to kick off. We're going to get some uh, transactions happening in our chain. We're going to get some things happening, some real blocks actually being created, and uh, transactions inside those blocks. We can see that things are compiling and working there. You'll see up there as well in the blue, we've got a series of uh, services that are running on our quick start. So we've got a HTTP endpoint. That's what our Truffle is interacting with right now. There's a WebSocket. Uh, endpoint, so that's uh, supporting the pub sub API, which uh, is, is sort of well known and being more well established now. And there's also the block explorer sitting there as well. So I'll go through and show you our connecting into the WebSocket. So it's just using a normal, uh, simple WebSocket client uh, Chrome extension sitting here. So I'm just going to open a connection to that WebSocket and send in a ETH subscribe telling it that we're subscribing to the new heads events. And if the demo gods are kind, we'll start to see some uh, transactions coming through. And there we go. So we've we got blocks being created. I'll switch across now to our block explorer, which ships as a part of the uh, test network that we've got setting there. Um, we should start to see that the best blocks numbers will be increasing there. So you can see that the blocks are going through. This is a new block explorer that's been produced by the uh, team at Alethio. They're going to be open sourcing this and making it available for people to have on their own private networks as well. So you can see it's kind of a nice, clean, simple interface that we've got sitting here. If I go into that best block, you can also see, I guess, some things you can see there. So we've got uh, six peers on our network, so that uh, Docker network that I have sitting there has six peers sort of sitting in, connecting, talking to each other. Our best block is sitting there, and you can see that the current head block there doesn't have any transactions in it. We're mining pretty rapidly in this network so that we can uh, keep seeing our transactions come through. If I go down to here, you can sort of see the, the nice interface there. You get kind of a length of here's how many transactions there are in each block. So if I click on one, you can see there's our transactions. And then we can drill down and actually see the details of one of our transactions and get some of the, the details of what's happening here. So that's us with a, a live block explorer interacting with Pantheon, our new mainnet client. One last thing as I want to highlight here is just we've got some simple documentation where we're working towards making this an accessible client for people to get working with and using easily. So we expect that, I guess, the, if we're pulling people in from the Java community, they're going to know nothing about Ethereum. So that quick start is a great way for them to get started. Our documentation, we're making it easy for people to get started and working with the product. This is, I guess, an area where we'd love to get feedback. So if people are downloading and getting started with Pantheon, you're going, WTF? What's happening here? Then we want to know and, and get feedback and know how we can make this thing better. That's our demo. Let's have a look at some of the stuff. Yep. 
It's just a test net. So, yep. Okay, so we've got our roadmap here of things that are happening. So there's three main themes that we've got happening as a group at Pegasus. So we've got our core client, we've got our enterprise features, and our Ethereum 2.0 work. We take mainnet as the message has been, we take mainnet seriously. And so we want to make sure that we are having mainnet as our first class thing. It's mainnet first in our client. We've built mainnet support. We have this vision for an enterprise client that will be used by enterprises and it is enterprise grade, but mainnet's first. You know, you've got to build on top of what's there. and. A world where enterprises are pinning their, their technologies, maybe using side chains, like we've got on our enterprise uh, stack there, uh, pinning things back to, to mainnet and it all sort of works, is, is the world that we want to enable with Pantheon. And so that's why we're doing what we're doing. So core, um, our two sort of big things that we see in the short term there, we don't have a fast sync yet, so we're running as a, as a full archive node. It's our alpha, that's where we started. We're going to build on top of that and be running as a full node and getting the, the sort of fast sync E63 sort of messages working well and working on performance. So working with the Infura guys and making sure that uh, Pantheon is working well enough to, to support the billions of requests that are coming in through Infura. We'd love to have Pantheon being a part of that and we're working with Infura to, to help make that happen. On the enterprise side, so there's a bunch of things happening there. Uh, I guess the, the interesting ones, so we're doing a PBFT-based uh, consensus mechanism. We've got some really smart guys, way smarter than me, actually doing the uh, formal definition of that and uh, doing like the liveness proofs and making sure that this protocol that we're, we're specifying up there that's PBFT-based is really sort of robust and a good protocol for us to be using and building on top of. We're looking at the, the EEA, so the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. They're specifying a bunch of stuff around uh, the consensus mechanisms, but also the permissioning and privacy side. So we're doing our own implementations of those uh, standards and making sure that our client is ready for enterprises to start using and provides the features which we know that they, they really care about and need. Looking as well at the sidechain side, so I guess being able to support that as we go forward with the future. The last section that I've got down the bottom there, and last but clearly not least, is Ethereum 2.0. And so Pegasus has a bunch of work that we are doing in the Ethereum 2.0 space. Uh, we've got uh, Ben Edgington, is probably not here, but he's, uh, I guess, got a team around him that's doing really great work in the, the research side and bringing that forward into the development side as well. And so our Pantheon client is going to be an Ethereum 2.0 client. And so we're doing the work on the, the beacon chains, uh, sharding and all the Ethereum 2.0 research and bringing that forward into our development space as well. That's our roadmap. So looking at that, there's a bunch of ways that we'd love to get people involved. Uh, for anyone that's enterprisey and working at, working at places in, in enterprise, we're looking for uh, companies, partners, clients that we can sort of partner with to make sure that we're building the software that's the right software for you. We want to make sure that our code is not uh, being built in a vacuum off to the side by a bunch of theoretical engineering guys. Like I'm, a, I'm the product guy saying, let's actually build stuff that solves problems and meets client needs. So we're looking for people on the enterprise side there. We're looking for, uh, I feel almost like Steve Vollmer, but like developers. So I, I won't say it three times, but, um, and I guess in, two, in, in, in a bunch of ways. So Pegasus is hiring. We'd love to have people join our team and, and come work with us. But also we don't want to like be the only ones doing work on this product. We'd, we'd love to have an open source community and be working with a community of people. So if you've got ideas, uh, things that you want to see in a client, Come along, contribute, create pull requests. Uh, we're open source, we're Apache 2, you know, we're, we're there to, to work with you. If you, I guess the other thing for the developers is download us, use us, and tell us what doesn't work. Tell us what's hard. You know, it's an alpha. Um, it's, it's actually a really good alpha, I think, but it's, it's, it's still an alpha and, you know, you know things aren't going to be perfect. And we'd love to get feedback and we want to make this like 
the best client. I am going to hand over to Shahar. Thank you, Rob. So, we are on GitHub. We are open source. Please submit PRs. We have already received an, a PR from a, somebody out there in the world, and we've accepted the PR. Join us on Gitter, on, twi on Twitter. Uh, visit us at the booth. We are close by, and we are hiring. We are keen on talking to you, developers, enterprises, product people. We want to ingest your ideas. We want to chat with you. So please talk to us. Talk to Rob about product. Talk to Dan about engagement, about uh, strategy. Talk to me about research. Talk to Ben about research. Please, just talk with us. Engage with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. So I think you're doing a hackathon, too. Are, are you doing yes. a hackathon so this weekend? Just before Thank we you. open up for questions, uh, we're going to take questions now. But if everyone who's a member of Pegasus could raise their hand, there's a few of you in the room. Feel free after this talk to go up to any one of them for questions as well. And we're going to be at the booth, uh, the consensus booth, which is just in the sponsor zone right at the end of this hall all afternoon. Uh, and as Jerome said, there's an enterprise hackathon this weekend that's here in Prague. So if you're spending a few days in this beautiful city and don't want to see pretty sights but want to hack instead, uh, come join us. We, we can give you all the info at the booth. What a sales pitch, Dan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going to be raining this weekend, I think. Yeah, uh, exactly. There we go. <laughs> so worst question. Hi. So um, for interaction um, with um, Pantheon, uh, will people use a, a Web3J library, or is it um, something else that you all have created? Yep, so it's the standard sort of APIs are the main way to work with it at the moment. So Web3J, Web3JS are the, the ways to go right now. Um, I expect in the fullness of time, there'll be a more direct API for Java people to, to interact with. But right now, Web3J works really, really well. So we're using Web3J as a part of our acceptance test sort of suite. Cool. So you think that like in the future that Pantheon will be maybe a library that you bring into whatever yeah. Java project you're doing? Cool. Thank you. What do you think what do you think about using Kotlin to get most of the um, Java benefits but uh, you don't have to write this language? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, Kotlin's uh, definitely, we've got people that are really excited about Kotlin and, and looking at it for, for definitely some of the, the parts of the, the code base. And I think as we start to build more and more modules, I think Kotlin is probably my preference over like a Scala. So um, there'll be some people, I think maybe even on the stage, who might say that Scala is a better choice than uh, Kotlin, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're open to all. It's JVM, so yeah. And uh, we're, we're actually already in the process of transitioning to support Kotlin. We're revamping some of the infrastructure, or the architecture to do that. Um, are you going to provide corporative support, like create a corporation standard and a corporation uh, support company, to support companies that want to use your software? The short answer that I'll give is yes, and Dan might say more. So absolutely, uh, we have a support offering that we're already working on. If you're interested in that, we'd love to chat a little bit more and we can talk through. The truth is we haven't rolled it out yet, so the details of it, we want to talk to enterprises and understand what you'd be looking for as we define it, but absolutely. Yeah. Uh, hey, that's super exciting, thank you. Um, did you start uh, working on FastSync yet? And if not, are you interested to collaborate with, with the guest team, the parity team, on maybe solutions in this regard for future proof? Um, yes, yeah, so we haven't on the product side started doing much uh, Casper related stuff, but uh, Ben Edgington has been definitely looking into it and, yeah, definitely love the idea of collaborating with people. Yeah, and th with the FastSync, yeah, we're, we're, we're working on. Uh, having so. that interoperability, that extensibility of, in the network protocol, for example, and the yeah. sync mechanism. Yeah. Did I hear interoperability in sync mode, fast sync mode? Uh, we, we're looking at interoperability at in, in different layers. So uh, at the network layer, at the uh, 
uh, EVM layer because some enterprises may want to extend the EVM in some fashion, uh, such as use integrating their databases or big data frameworks or AI, AI frameworks. Uh, the use cases are still open. Uh, we'd love to hear the use cases that enterprises would love to engage on, and uh, we're and the more we talk with customers, the more we'll understand where at what layers we can develop that API, those APIs. Just wanted to add to some uh, something that Afri said uh, about fast sync. So with the parity team and guest team uh, wanted to collaborate on a new sync protocol. And if you guys are interested, you're more than welcome to join uh, in about eight minutes <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> on, uh, on the discussion of where to take the whole uh, sync protocols because it's a really pain point for everybody. So, where is that happening here? Or? Uh, we're not sure yet. Somewhere. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, grab me. Yeah. Cool. Yep. We have one more question, uh, gentlemen in the green. Uh, have you reused any of the Ethereum J code or you have started from scratch? So for licensing reasons, we've started from scratch. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Do you have any um, point in your roadmap to support OSGI integration, for example? Uh, not currently, but we're, I guess we've got a short short-term roadmap and then a open sort of roadmap beyond. Yeah, so even though we're not supporting OSGI, it works with Spring, so dependency injection works very well with the, the framework as is, uh, and it's very easy to use, so uh, very easy to extend and uh, apply. There's probably a PR sitting somewhere that does the Spring integration. I saw um, IBFT is on the roadmap. Is that for future quorum support? So we're, we're using a an IBFT-based uh, protocol, and so uh, the potential for interop with, with Quorum is there. Um, the actual details of how that's going to work is, is not yet, uh, I guess, developed, and so it's hard to say how it's going to exactly work. Yeah, and we, we, while we have an IBFT implementation, and it is interoperable with Quorum right now, uh, we're working on uh, an IBFT 2.0, which is uh, uh, meets better constraints for liveness and safety. Yeah, do you all have on your roadmap a, a plan to maybe improve the privacy features of private transactions in, in Quorum? Can you talk about what y'all are doing there? Yep, so we definitely have the ideas around how to do a privacy in a way that's, I guess, different to Quorum. And so sort of inspired by or learning some of the lessons from Quorum, but done somewhat differently. Um, and the actual implementation details, are again, I sound like a broken record, haven't got actually done yet. But um, yeah, there's definitely some, some diagrams and things that I can, I can share with you and have a chat with later. Yeah, and the EEA spec V1 was released uh, in May. V2 was released yesterday. Uh, they have privacy levels. Uh, we're looking to see how Quorum's privacy and our privacy uh, features may interoperate or just compare and see how we can per perhaps support the EEA standards as well as customer requirements. They may not overlap, so we're very curious to hear what kind of privacy requirements that you're seeking. So please come talk to us. It, it also might be worth I mean, you might have thought about this, but you know, creating a bounty to see if you know, there's a lot of different ways to kind of glean information on those private transactions. So, yeah, it, it might be a good idea to like try and open that up just to sure. to make sure that banks and insurance companies are you know are are comfortable with that. Yeah, but definitely. Just a, just a thought. Yeah, I mean, our R&D team, uh, the ETH 2.0 team, they're working on zk Starks, zk Snarks, uh, trying to figure out how those get integrated at multiple layers of the protocol. Uh, how uh, they can be simplified, aggregated, um, composed. These are all mm. pieces that we're all actively looking into. Uh, what kind of technology are you using for the chain data storage? Yep, so at the moment we're, we're still working on a RocksDB sort of database for the, the storage. Um, we're looking at, so we've got an abstraction layer around that and so moving into support, I guess, a, you know, pluggable uh, storage mechanisms. So I guess it's Java, so probably something JDBC based um, with the caching layer to actually make sure the performance happens as well. 
Yeah, and, and the R&D team is also looking at database technologies to try and uh, simplify the integration and the indexing uh, benefits that come from databases. So we're trying to see where, where the technologies can be leveraged in, in the blockchain and vice versa because that's how we're trying to bridge. We're trying to bring mainnet technologies to enterprise and vice versa, bring enterprise technologies to mainnet.